What's up guys, Nature from Protoculture and Shadow Chronicles and welcome to the Sonic Academy tutorial on how to use Isotopes Ozone 9. As I'm sure you know, Ozone 9 is a complete mastering solution uh, there to aid you into maximizing and finalizing your tracks for release or for the club or what have you. Uh, there's a number of different modules that make up this, this package. Uh, there's a bunch of new ones as well that have been included in version 9, which we're going to go through in depth, uh, each and every single one of the modules. Uh, right off the bat though, we're going to dive into one of the star features, uh, Ozone's Master Assistant, which is an AI-driven um, assistant which will help you set up your masters. Uh, from there, we'll dive into all the modules separately, run through each and every single one of them and how to use them. Uh, before revisiting our master at the end of the tutorial and we'll master a, tr a track in its entirety using only Ozone uh, plugins. Uh, this course is designed for beginners right through to intermediate users. Uh, if you're wanting to get into Ozone, this is a tutorial to check out. Also, if you're looking for some extra tips and tricks, I'll cover a few of those um, with regards to mastering throughout the tutorial as well. I uh, hope you guys enjoy this. I will catch you in the next video. Cheers. Right, welcome guys. Um, we are just about to dive into Ozone. I've opened up a new project for us and I've got a track that needs to be mastered. Um, I have, in this case, just loaded Ozone onto the channel directly. Um, you could load this onto a group channel and send the audio into a group should you want to do sort of volume changes or um, at the very least then load your prefade in Cubase. You'd want to move that before Ozone. Um, move over ozone down a little bit if you want to do any volume automation beforehand in this case i'm not going to bother with that we're not going to be doing anything like that yeah uh, so let's open this up and this is what you greeted with so before we kind of um, begin our deep dive into this and looking at all the modules in detail um, we're going to look at one of the sort of main selling points of ozone which is the master assistant. So before we look over the GI, I'll come to the GI just in a little bit in this video. Um, we're just going to dive straight in and hit master assistant. And this is what's going to come up. Um, let's just check we've got our... It's the track that we're wanting to master. So we have a few options here. Um, it first asks you what kind of modules it would like to use. So you have an option between vintage and modern. You have a vintage EQ model, vintage compressor, etc. And then the modern ones. We'll stick with modern for now, um, the digital ones. Uh, then you have the loudness and EQ preferences. So usually you have this option between low, medium and high. It's just how, how intense or how hard things should be driven. Um, but we are going to forego this uh, for a reference file instead. So I have a reference file loaded in here. Uh, it's the track that had sort of similar qualities to the one that I'm working on. And um, I kind of wanted to get my sound uh, quite close to this uh, release. So with your reference file being loaded in here, it's basically going to analyze that as you are mastering and apply sort of effects and stuff to kind of get you as close to this as possible. Then lastly, you have destination, you have streaming and CD. Streaming is going to do it at uh, your output is going to be at about minus one just to kind of prevent any conversion issues. Um, I mean, you're converting to MP3 or stream for, for streaming services. Generally, streaming services will turn down your mix quite a bit anyways, automatically. Um, where CD, you can master to, it will master to minus 0 0.3, which is kind of standard. You never want to master to zero. It can cause issues uh, with clips and things like that. So minus 0 0.3 is going to be where you want to be. And um, yeah, so we'll stick with CD. Um, we've got our track ready. We're going to be looking for the sort of loudest part of the track, which will be about here. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to let Ozone do its thing and then we'll take a look at what it comes up with. Uh, let's just hit play and then we're going to hit next. And um, you don't want to be listening to this at full volume on your speakers. It does come up with a few little clips and things as it adjusts the modules um, while it's going through the tracks. So don't have it at full volume um, when you're doing this. Okay, cool. Let's go uh, play and let it analyze the tracks.
Okay, there we go. It's all done. Uh, you can see it's done a bunch of processes here, and we're going to hit accept and take a look at whether it's actually done its job properly. So we can see it's added an equalizer, dynamics, it it's decided to forego the dynamics, um, the dynamic EQ it's put in, uh, just to make sure that you're getting the most out of the maximizer. We can see around here it's taken out some mud, it's taken out around, I'm not sure that it looks around, like sort of 130, that's often something that I dip out as well, so that's not surprising. It's taken a little bit of the mid-range and a little bit of the tops. Bear in mind, these are dynamic EQs, but we're going to come to this later and look at this all in detail. Um, our maximizer, it's set that, the ceiling at 0 0.3, and yeah, okay, cool. So let's actually see, um, it's all good looking at the stuff. We want to actually see, uh, hear whether it's done its job correctly. So with that reference file we loaded, and you can also access this now from the reference section down at the bottom here. And... If you turn that on, we should have our reference file playing. Um, you can set up a few different loops. I want to be listening to this section here. You can add in, um, move these around and just kind of um, set up sections that you want to uh, listen to. Um, but I want to kind of just be comparing the loudest parts of the track. So this section, yeah, probably. Let's play that back. <laughs> So that is our reference, and if we turn this on and off, we can reference that between the master that uh, Ozan's just done for us and this one. So let's just flick between them and just kind of listen to what's going on. Okay, it's not too bad. It's um, it's in the ballpark. Uh, there's a few things that I would probably change, but uh, as a starting point, and this for me really is what Mastering Assistant is all about. It It's a great starting point. I don't think these AI things are uh, the answer to all your mastering issues. I'm not a big fan of um, services like Lander. Uh, I do believe, you know, getting a mastering engineer or doing it yourself and having that sort of um, uh, creative choice to make decisions that the AI might not make um, is way more beneficial. But that said, um, uh, you know, tonal wise, uh, I would pr I would probably push a few levels a little bit more. Um, Maybe it's slightly different EQ, but it's not it's not far off. So it is a great starting point for you. Um, so yeah, that, that looks pretty good. And we can turn off that reference. So now that we've got our starting point, I want to just kind of uh, look at a few of the sort of basic um, GUI elements here before we start moving on to the actual modules themselves. Um, we're just going to kind of look at this section and this section here, and we'll, we'll discuss these uh, at a later stage. Um, so this year is just a label for the plugin. Uh, a lot of isotope stuff is sort of um, instance aware, so that they're aware of other plugins in your session. Uh, if you're using Neutron and stuff, uh, a lot of the plugins can talk to each other. Uh, so being able to label the plugin comes in handy when you want to link two separate plugins together. Um, obviously, this is your module section. Yeah, you can add modules, take out modules, solo modules. Etc. Uh, Etc. Et Mastering system we've covered. Uh, this is just the preset section. You have a number of um, different presets here, uh, which you can access. You have undo for pretty much everything that you do in the plugin, and there's also an undo history, which is a really nice, um, nice addition. Um, you have some settings. I'm not going to get into these now. We'll come to those later. Um, a lot of these settings are specifically for different modules, uh, stuff to do with TruePeak and uh, imaging settings and um, crossovers for dynamics, etc. Uh, we'll come to that a little bit later. Then you have your I.O. section here. Um, you have some options, uh, uh, RMS, peak, metering, K-system, which is pretty 
comprehensive. You've got quite a bit here. Um, so default obviously set to RMS and our source we want stereo, stereo you can have mid side as well um, and you can replace the input with the reference so if you want to look at the reference uh, volume you can do that as well um, we'll close that and uh, these are just your level meters so your ins and your outs um, these can be unlinked so that you can separately adjust the left and right as well this here is our resolution just for the, the metering. It's not changing any volume or anything, it's just uh, changing the resolution of the actual meters here. Then you have a bypass. Global bypass, which will bypass all your modules currently loaded. And then gain match, which is really important as well. So it's very difficult to yeah, um, the differences you're making in a mastering session when your master is so much louder than your unmastered version. Um, so even if you make a mess and add stuff which doesn't sound great, it's still, psychoacoustically, your brain is still going to think it sounds better because it's louder. So having gain match on, you'll see we can bypass and there's no volume difference. The It's actually bringing up the levels of the unmastered one to match the mastered version. Um, so you can actually tell exactly what the processors are doing. We'll just check that again. So you can actually, yeah, there's um, some subtle EQ differences, especially in the low mid, mids, um, using that bypass, you can kind of hear that a lot easier now um, when your gain is matched. Uh, this one, yeah, uh, sorry, we've, we've covered the reference. Um, the codec is basically just simulates a MP3 or AAC uh, codec, and you can set the rate. <laughs> So you can hear those those little artifacts then, or that sort of um, weird phasing going on because it's a low bit rate. This is super handy. Just if you are mastering for a streaming service like Spotify or whatever, uh, I believe Apple, for example, is it's one ninety two. I'll have to check exactly. Um, I'm not sure if it's one ninety two or if it's even a lower bit rate. Anyway, so the, the idea here is that you um, can simulate that conversion process in real time uh, to listen to what your stuff is going to sound like once it's been converted for Spotify or Apple Music. And then Solo Artifacts will just show you what's going on. You'll see there's a lot less happening there at higher bit rates. Uh, I believe what this is actually doing is it's just um, phase flipping the uh, converted signal um, and comparing it with the original one. So it's interesting to see what is actually changing in your audio when you are converting to an MP3 or AAC format. Um, predominantly it's what's going on in the highs, um, but yeah, that is handy to just make sure that you're not having any serious issues with, uh, with the conversion process. So we'll close the codec and... Uh, mono mono mode and uh, this will just phase flip or not phase flip but switch the left and right channels around. Uh, check your mixes in mono and that just flips the left and right channels around. Okay, so that pretty much covers the sort of basic GUI and master assistant for this. Um, in the next video, we're going to start diving into the actual modules themselves. Um, there's some pretty mind-blowing stuff in the new Ozone as well we're going to check out. Uh, I will get to those in the next video, so I'll see you then. Cheers. Thanks, everybody, for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please... We'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.